now we're here. I feel like we're, we're flying into Jurassic Park. What is this place? It's the remains of an old volcano. It was once inhabited by natives, but their civilization died out. People sail or fly into camp here. It's, it's quite well known. There's Devil's Eye. Here we are. Oh, there's Devil's Eye there. And the yachts. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so excited. Mikey will be flying later on this afternoon to do the filming. Yep, that's right. Looking forward to it. See you out there. Don't forget to keep your head down when you get out. All right, thanks, Mike. Thanks for the lift. See you later. Oh, yeah. Head down, all right. Oh. Oh, it's so amazing. What an amazing place. There are the yachts looking spectacular. There's Devil's Eye. Apparently this is the only beach on the entire island. It's just, the rest of it's just rock. People come and fly in, just come to Devil's Eye and this little beach is down right here. Wow, here we go. Here, here we have three private, super high performance yachts. Um, the airbender have built the wings for. They are super lightweight, super fast, and remarkably, Ferrari have put their name to just a, a very limited number of these yachts built. The foiling system is remarkable. It, it has six main foils, all of which have independent controls. The forward foils can swing from being under the yacht to out wide to act like outriggers. The rear rudder foils can lift and lower. It has a canting and lifting keel. That also has another swiveling foil on it as well. And as the yachts build up speed, the front foils lift the yacht onto its planing part of its hull, which allows it to further build up speed. And once it's lifted from the water, the yacht increases in speed again, and the windward foils can be adjusted so they're out of the water. And we're really just so excited to be partnered with these yachts and provide the wings for them. The yachts come in a number of different configurations where they can have a cruising or racing set of sails, but they won't necessarily lift the yachts out of the water. The foils are obviously carbon fibre, the, the rudder foils can completely lift out of the water, the wings are easily replaced and you can probably see the pitch control device there which is on all of the foils and controlled by a very high speed central processing unit which takes in all sorts of data from a number of instruments at uh, an incredible speed. And Ferrari, <laughs> Ferrari were reluctant at first to get behind this venture, but eventually came around to supporting it, putting the name behind just a limited number of the yachts, because they go really fast. Uh, this height, this mast is about 35 meters in height, carbon fiber obviously, and whilst it may look like the yachts are anchored, they're actually being held in place by their propulsion system, which consists of um, four re retractable electro-pod drives and a couple of GPS units to control their position. And this is okay when it's a gentle wind like it is this morning. So here we have our wings. We are we're really excited to have our wings on board these yachts. You're seeing a combination of winged headsails and winged mains. This afternoon, uh, we'll go out for a bit of a sail when the wind kicks in a bit more and show you what these yachts can do. And like I said earlier, they go extremely fast for a cruising yacht. The wings are fully automated, uh, variable camber morphing wings, which are connected to a series of sensors throughout the yacht. Uh, even though the variable camber inducing mechanisms are fully automated, we can of course control every aspect to them and override them from either, the, either one of the helms. We can control the shape of either side of the wings independently from each other. We can also change the shape of each of the battens from the top to the bottom, which means we can flatten off the top of the wing when we need to depower instead of needing to reef it. But of course, being a soft wing system, it can be fully reefed as well and, uh, and lowered into its lazy jacks. On yacht number two here, we have an automated system whereby the crew controls internal shape forming mechanisms from the helm or via a handheld remote control unit. And also the shape of the head saw wings are also controlled in a similar manner. Whilst they do have sheets, they're primarily tethered to the track system.
Here we go. Uh, so yeah, so the wind kicked in and we were having a bit of a blast. You can see Mike up there in the helicopter following us around with the uh, camera crew. Uh, we, all, <laughs> we also have a little fast little drone up there as well, which did get a little bit too close to the chopper at one point. We're traveling at about 75 kilometers an hour, which is about 30 knots, and we could, could have gone a little faster, but we wanted this just to be a fun, controlled sail. The ride is really smooth. Once you're up above the waves, the, the sound changes, you can really feel the wind in your, in your face and the speed of the yacht. And the CPU is constantly controlling the wing and the foils, and all we really had to do was just steer. Here we're looking at a 100 foot high performance cruising and racing yacht. And well, obviously the first item that stands out are its foils, which are inspired by the America's Cup technology. And it won't be too long before we're seeing privately owned yachts with professional crew um, back and foil. And this particular yacht uh, features large expansive decks, uh, very minimalist design, uh, single mast with that traditional Bermudan rig. Um, and looking at the uh, typical sail set, so the main is a, is a typical triangular shaped mainsail which is good for in-mast or in-boom furling. And a full complement of forward sails, a, a staysail, headsail or jib, screecher or code zero and a kite. And this full complement of racing sails may not be used whilst in cruising mode as, as often you know, a, a large crew is required to manage this type of arrangement. One of the design factors um, as we swing around to look at these sails from the back is that they create what is known as the slot effect. The slot effect works when the airflow on the windward side of the head source is directed towards the leeward side of the mainsail. And it's an important aerodynamic feature with the single skin mainsail. Without the slot effect, the airflow over the leeward side of the main becomes detached. And as a result of the mass and angle of attack, this detached airflow reduces lift and increases drag. So here we're looking at a more modern version, um, square top mainsail, which has a much larger increase in roach, uh, far more surface area. So let's have a look at the mainsail as a soft wing. The, the first and obvious difference is that it has two skins or, or two sides to it. The leeward side is cambered, just like an aircraft wing, and the windward side is mostly flat, but with a slight concave. And it's important to note that the airbender system allows us to control the shape of both sides of the wing independently. This allows us to, to control the speed of the airflow over both surfaces, which in turn alters the pressure differences between the two sides. And as we look up in to the inside of the wing, you can see the shape closely resembles that of an aircraft wing. The cambered skin uh, closely resembles the shape of a single skin sail, but in order for it to work more efficiently, it's actually beneficial to stop the airflow from getting to that inside curvature. Air that flows into a concave curvature really slows down, and despite the increase in pressure, causes an increase in drag. And as a result, a wing has a higher lift to drag ratio than a single skin sail. I also wanted to show you what a soft wing structure would look like as a headsail. So I've presented one here with clear sides and some colored internal shapes so that you can see its structural shape. Most importantly, the leading edge of a wing structure is absolutely critical for the correct airflow over both surfaces, but more importantly, the airflow over the leeward side. And it's the leeward side where the lift is created as the air accelerates around the leading edge and over the top of the camber, a low pressure is formed on this side of the sail. This particular design has an independent leading edge which clips to the foil on the foresail and this allows the head stool, the head stool to be hoisted and lowered as per usual and its internal workings to be brought down to the deck. As we swing around on top here, you'll, you'll notice that it has a square top um, which is more efficient in a wing. And there's also quite a consistent narrow slot created between the leech and the mast. And whilst this might be desirable on a single skin mainsail, it's actually detrimental to the airflow over a wing structure, depending on the apparent wind angle, um, because the airflow is actually choked. 
So to increase the size of the slot, we can reef the headsail and this pulls it forward. This is only really suitable on this particular design of yacht where, um, where we can change the location of the sheeting as well. But that opening of the slot allows higher speed airflow to get through. And this airflow would ordinarily have been slowed down due to the concave effect of a regular sail shape. The higher speed airflow over the leeward side of the main, um, over the main wing, increases the amount of lift. And in comparison to a regular sail, the lift to drag ratio is much higher as a result of not choking the air through the slot. The airbender's internal shaping mechanism, which is not on display here, is connected to the battens on the inside of the wings. The system allows for, um, for the design of a soft wing structure to be fully reefable uh, and ultimately stowed with minimal windage as possible, shown here with a height of around about a metre. The design allows for the wing to maintain its shape even when fully reefed or indeed completely stowed.